2010 saw two very interesting trends in LEGO. The first was the end of Bionicle, a decade of amazing sets and amazing story, and the introduction of Hero Factory, which lasted about four or five years, and while it had its good sets and it had a decent story, was not nearly as popular as its predecessor of Bionicle. However, what a lot of people forget is that a year before that, in 2009, LEGO gave us a well, a taste of a series that was quickly discontinued after only six sets. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the introduction before CCBS was even created in 2011. I'm talking about LEGO Ben 10. For those of you familiar with the Hero Factory 1.0 before the creation of CCBS, this was the original torso they used for the Hero Factory sets. It was a little squat, fairly broad, but at the time, we didn't really complain about it because, well, it was different from the other bodies that we had in Bionicle that we had to build. However, in 2009, with the LEGO Ben 10 series, we had these bodies. Basically, almost a prototype of the original Hero Factory body. These were taller and thinner. Now, of course, Hero Factory had its chest plates, similar to these, that simply pegged in the front, about where the waist is. And that was fine. However, LEGO Ben 10 had a similar thing. It was the year afterwards, of course, that Hero Factory 1.0 came out. But no one really noticed the similarities between, well, bodies that were almost identical and limbs that had very striking similarities. Were I to show you a LEGO hand similar to this, or a LEGO foot like this, or even basic body joints, like these. You might think, well, they just look like normal Bionicle parts. However, they were, they were each individually designed for the use of the Ben 10 series. Never before had we seen legs like this. They were very strange and unusual, and they came with these bizarre armor parts. They could just plug into the normal lightsaber-sized holes. It was very different, and surprisingly enough, even though at the time Bionicle's joints and even the first set of Hero Factory's joints were fairly fragile, these were very thick joints. They held up well. They were, well, tougher, stronger. They were better for mocking. Even though they only came in in, in six different sets, the Ben 10 Wave during from t late 2009 to early 2010 had the sets of Big Chill, Swamp Fire, Humongosaur, Chroma Stone, Jetfire, and Spider Monkey. I only was able to collect one of those sets, the Big Chill set. However, I kind of wanted to get all six of them. Just like Bionicle's Anika build that we had all become accustomed to, the Ben 10 builds had three points of articulation in both arms, both legs, and we had a point of articulation in the head. However, each one came with different accessories. For example, Humongosaur came with different, like a head accessory, uh, Spider Monkey had a tail and four arms, and Big Chill had these two enormous wings which could be simply just plugged into the back. And of course, because it's Lego, you could instantly just pull them out because they were just attached by a tiny little axle. I gotta say, even today, by, you know, even compared to other LEGO sets I have, the Ben 10 Big Chill figure is still very imposing and pretty cool. While the joints are, fair, are you know, still kind of tight because it is older plastic, it holds up very well and I don't worry about its condition at all. But it just looks very imposing and really cool. At 10 inches tall at the head, the Ben 10 figures stood about as tall as your normal CCBS figures nowadays. Here's him compared to an unedited at all Kopaka from the current Ben 10 wave. Sorry, from the current Bionicle wave. And you can actually see they're, while well, he's a little bit shorter, they're roughly the same height, and it's only the added wings that make him taller. Even though by today's standards, these sets are a lot more complicated. The Ben 10 figures that came out in 2009 were definitely worth the $10 they cost, and you can actually find them for still reasonable prices online. It's just kind of a bummer that LEGO never continued this line and instead decided to go with Hero Factory. Uh, ben 10 
as a series continued on and only ended in about 2014, so they would have had plenty of years worth of models and characters they could have done. But, you know, the past is the past, unfortunately we can't change it. Until next time, I'm Metagross Freak, and I hope this look into LEGO's past has been a little eye-opening for you.